morning everybody welcome to our third last day uh, we're on March 29th here of our 31 day March minimizing challenge uh, today I'm going to be looking at small kitchen appliances uh, so just the small appliances that we generally have sitting on our counters or in our cupboards that we would uh, use out of convenience um, we tend to get very uh, sucked into convenience, right? We like quick things. We like it to be easy. That's just, I think, general human nature. And manufacturers really know how to hack into this for us, and they show us all these really cool things that we need. And in the kitchen is one of those places where it's so easy to look for convenient um, you know, promises of quick and easy solutions. Um, you know, it, the kitchen is just one of those very busy rooms and we're busy people and the quicker we can get a meal on the table or the faster, more convenient or, you know, we've got this one-off item that can do, you know, this one meal super quick and, you know, we tend to get caught up in the excitement of things and the novelty of things. And then after a little while, um, and sometimes it's a very short period of time that novelty wears off or you realize that that juicer that you bought has so many pieces to clean that it's actually more of a pain to make juice than it is to, you know, um, uh, sorry, it's more of a pain to, to make the juice because now you have to clean the juicer, which has all these little pieces that you need to take apart. Uh, so... Today we're going to pull out all of our appliances, all of our small kitchen appliances, and we're going to put them where you can see them, generally probably either your counter or your dining room table. And this includes everything that small and plugs in, so your kettles, your coffee makers, your toasters, your blenders, food processors, instant pots, slow cookers, toaster, ovens, mixers, sandwich makers, ice cream makers, uh, blenders, anything, I said blender, anyway, Anything that you have that's a small appliance that you have either on your counter or in your cupboards, bring it all out, bring all your toys out, uh, put them all on your table so that you can see visually, first of all, just how many that you have. And some of you will have a few, and some of you will have several, right? Then we come back to our basic two questions. Right? We always ask first, and we don't look at them as, as a group, but always as individual items. Ask yourself for each item. One, do I love this? Two, does it serve a purpose? Right? If you love it, great. And if it serves a purpose, great. But if it, you don't love it, if there's something about it that's inconvenient, or maybe you'd really like to use it, like I mentioned the example of that juicer, you know, you really like the idea of a juicer, you really like the idea, but you never use it because of the inconvenience of having to clean it. It's not something that's serving you, right? Now you're actually carrying guilt about the juicer because you should be making juice, you bought it to make the juice, you spent the money to make the juice, but you're not making the juice because it's inconvenient to clean. That's not serving you, right? So even if it has a purpose, it needs to be serving you, right? Does it serve a purpose for you is really important. It doesn't matter any longer how much money you spent on any of these items. That money is spent. It's not coming back. So that's a hurdle you have to kind of just jump over. What you take away from this is spending habits into the future, right? You learn lessons from your experiences here of decluttering, when you see what you spent money on that you're now putting out the door, some things may have served a purpose for a while and it was money well spent and now you're no longer using it but you feel you got your money out of it. So there's not really guilt in parting with that item. But when we have items that we spend money on and we don't feel that we really got our money's worth out of it, it's a little harder to part with that item, right? But you need to understand that that money is spent. It's not coming back. And if you're not using that item, there is no sense in keeping it. And we carry that lesson into the future where you'll be wiser 
with your spending dollars next time, right? Next time, maybe you'll think a little bit longer before you buy. Instead of doing an impulse buy, you're actually going to say, you know what? I'm going to wait 48 hours before making a decision on whether I'm going to buy that item. And maybe two days from now, I'm not even thinking about it anymore. Obviously, it wasn't that important. Um, you want to, uh, you know, learn from your experiences here so that we don't make the same spending errors in the future, right? Um, everyone has different appliances that they swear by. And so no one can tell you, oh, you should keep this item or you shouldn't keep that item, you know, because when someone else is telling you what's important, they're basing it on what's important for them, not necessarily what's important for you. So whereas, you know, in my home, I use my slow cooker probably every week. So a slow cooker to me is an important appliance that I have in my home. Somebody else might have a slow cooker and they maybe use it once a year, right? And they can probably, you know, just throw stuff in a roaster in the oven instead of having a fairly large appliance taking up room in their cupboards. So ask yourself some additional questions for each item that you want to maybe keep, right? Before you put it in your keep pile. Do you use it? How often do you use it? And if you didn't have this appliance, what would you use instead? Because sometimes we realize, oh yeah, back to the slow cooker example, if you only use your slow cooker once or twice a year, well, it does the same job in the oven. You could just be, you know, using your oven instead and rather than having this appliance take up a bunch of room in your cupboard, right? Just because you use it doesn't mean you need it. Keep that in mind also, right? If, there's, if you can get to the same end another way that's just as convenient, right, or you don't use it often enough to warrant keeping the convenience around, it's okay to part with it, you know. You don't have to keep it just because you use it. So keep that in mind as well. Appliances take up a lot of counter space, right. So a counter space is, is one, it's precious. You need that as working area. Uh, also, though, uh, when there's a lot of items on your counter, it creates a lot of visual clutter. And visual clutter actually creates stress in your body. You might not even realize that it's there because you're kind of used to seeing that stuff on the counter. But when your counters are all cleared off, like right now, uh, if you have all of your items cleared off onto your dining room table and you look at your kitchen counters, chances are there's very little there. And it probably feels a lot better. It feels a lot cleaner. There's open space. There's room for the airflow, right? So you want to keep as much of the clutter off of your counters as possible. So with the appliances that you choose to keep, you're going to try to find homes for them in your cupboards or in a closet or somewhere uh, still convenient. You want the items that you kind of have high use for. So you might have, um, say, your coffee maker, your kettle, maybe a toaster, um, or uh, appliances that you use regularly. Uh, so you want those to be very conveniently placed. So right at the front of a cupboard where it's easy to just open, bring it out. It literally takes a second to get it to your counter, right? And then it's also a second to put it away. It makes it super convenient, right? Um, but things that you use less often can be placed further back, kind of, you know, the least often ones, but you really need to keep it for whatever reason is going to be near the back. And then, you know, the ones you use once in a while, you're going to have kind of near the middle, but the ones that you use all the time, you want to be convenient right at the front. Sorry, I'm just checking here. Um, so one thing that sometimes people get caught up in and say with, uh, in particular, I've seen it a lot lately with the air fryers and the instant pots, is people are super excited and they hear other people talking about the success that they've had with 
the air fryers or instant pots and how great the food is that's coming uh, from these appliances and they go out and buy them and then they get frustrated because their food didn't turn out the way that they thought it would. If you're going to buy a new appliance, especially one that's going to assist you in cooking, uh, also make sure that you take the time to learn how to use it properly and to give it some time right to for you to learn it you know expect that your first couple few meals might not turn out the way you thought right but if you're going to get a uh you know an air fryer say also pick up a cookbook or find a youtube channel or somebody's recipe blog that is specific to the appliance that you're using in this case, we're about an air fryer, so that you can learn from someone else's experience, you'll have success a lot faster. Uh, so if you're gonna um, keep an appliance that you were really excited about, but then it kind of just sat there because you were disappointed in the results, either you're ready to part ways with it, and that's fine, or if you really want to keep it, Make sure then that you're going to commit to putting the time in to learn how to use it properly. Otherwise, there's no sense in keeping it, right? Someone else can use it, some pass it along. You know, someone else will appreciate having it. Um, you know, uh, so uh, so you want to make sure that you um, are either giving or donating the appliances that you're not using to someone that you know or to the thrift store you know somebody somebody that you know might really appreciate the items that you're not using and they'd be able to use it if not you can hand it off to a thrift store somebody there will pick it up gladly um, and gain back some of that precious storage space in your kitchen right you want to get that space back um, and it just feels good when you open your cupboards you can kind of see everything that's in there and you can easily find the appliances when you need them. So um, I hope that uh, this has been helpful for you today and that you're able to kind of lighten that load in your kitchen and clear some space. Our kitchens tend to get extremely full, right? And so it's nice to go through it once in a while and uh, give it a clear out. So that's uh, about it for uh, my topic today. I did want to mention that I am uh, hooking up with my friend uh, from uh, Living Simply Kitchen, Elizabeth, and at the beginning of May, we're going to be running a program together uh, called a Virtual Kitchen Cleanout, and we're going to be looking at the food items in your kitchen, your pantry, your fridge, and your freezer. So stay tuned. Uh, make sure that you follow my account. I will also link to Elizabeth's account in my notes. Um, and you can give her a follow as well. She's a fabulous holistic personal chef and uh, you should really check out her account and uh, her website and what she's doing. I'm very excited that we're going to be working on this project together. Uh, so stay tuned for details. We'll be having a more official announcement uh, coming out shortly, um, but we'll be running that at the beginning of May. So I hope that you'll follow along and stay tuned for more information about that coming up in just over a month. All right, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.